A quadratic function is a function that can be written in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not equal to zero. The reason we make this restriction, that a can't be equal to zero, is because if a were zero, we'd just have f of x equals bx plus c, and that's called a linear function. So the a not equal to zero ensures that we actually do have an x squared term, which is the hallmark of a quadratic function. Please pause the video for a moment and decide which of these equations represent quadratic functions. The first function can definitely be written in the form g of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In fact, it's already written in that form, where a is negative 5, b is 10, and c is 3. The second function is also a quadratic function, because we can think of it as 1 times x squared plus 0 times x plus 0, so it is in the right form where a is 1, b is 0, and c is 0. It's perfectly fine for b and c to be 0, that is, for the coefficient of x and the constant term to be 0, as long as the coefficient of x squared, the a value, is not 0. The third function is not a quadratic function. It's a linear function, because there's no x squared term here. The fourth function might not immediately look like a quadratic, but if we rewrite it by expanding out the x minus 3 squared, we get y equals 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus 4, so that's 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 4. In other words, it's 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 plus 4, which is now starting to look like the standard quadratic form. Here, a would be 2, b would be negative 12, and c is 22. So this is also a quadratic function. A quadratic function that's already written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is said to be in standard form. So our first function, g of x, is in standard form. A function that's written in this form, that is, in the form y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, for some real numbers, a, h, and k, where a is not 0, that's said to be in vertex form. So this last example is in vertex form. We'll talk more about standard form and vertex form later on in this video. Next, let's practice graphing quadratic functions. The graph of a quadratic function always looks like a parabola, which is this kind of shape. It can be opening upwards, like in this picture, or it can be opening downwards. The point at the tip of the parabola is called the vertex. Locating the vertex and the x-intercepts, if there are any, can be a handy way to draw the graph. This first quadratic function, f of x equals x squared, is one of our toolkit functions. So you may already be familiar with its graph, which looks something like this. It goes through the point 1, 0, 0, and also through the point 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, which you can figure out simply by plugging in those x values, negative 1, 0, and 1, into our equation. Notice that the vertex is at the point 0, 0, and in this particular graph, there's only one x-intercept. There's only one place where the y value is 0. That's because we find the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0. And, we, and if we set f of x or y equal to 0 and solve for x, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 0. In other words, x equals 0. One way to graph the second equation is to use the graph of the first equation and think about transformations of functions. The negative 3 on the inside means that the original graph needs to be shifted to the right by 3. The negative 2 multiplication and the plus 4 addition on the outside affects the y values and means that the whole thing is flipped 
vertically, in other words, flipped over the x-axis, stretched by a factor of 2, and shifted up by a factor of 4. In particular, the vertex that was originally at 0, 0 is now going to go to an x value of 3, since the x values get 3 added to them, and a y value of negative 2 times 0 plus 4, that means a y value of 4. Since the multiplication factor on the outside of negative 2 flipped and stretched the parabola, it will now be opening downwards and elongated, something like this. To find the exact values of the x-intercepts, we could set y equal to 0 and solve for x. That gives us 2 times x minus 3 squared equals 4, so x minus 3 squared equals 2, so x minus 3 is plus or minus the square root of 2, and so x is 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. Since the square root of 2 is a little more than 1, that's approximately where I drew them. Notice that our knowledge of transformations of functions was very useful to identify where the vertex went to. In, in fact, we can read off the vertex from the number 3 here and the number 4 here. In general, when a function is written in vertex form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, then the vertex will be at the point h, k. And that's because the original vertex of 0, 0 for our toolkit function gets shifted over h units to the right and k units up. This last example is trickier to graph because it's not in vertex form, so we can't just use transformations of functions like we did before. One way to graph it would be to rewrite it by putting it in vertex form, and I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, let's start by identifying the x-intercepts. If we set y equal to 0 and solve for x using the quadratic formula, we get x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times 5 times 3 all over 2 times 5. That simplifies to x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 40 over 10 or negative 10 over 10 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 10 over 10. I could rewrite the square root of 40 as 2 times the square root of 10 because 40 is 4 times 10 and the square root of 4 is 2. Simplifying a little more, I get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 10 over 5. Now the square root of 10 is a little more than 3, so this part here is about 3 fifths, a little bit less than 1. So my x-intercepts are going to be approximately negative 1 plus or minus 3 fifths, which is approximately negative 7, sorry, negative 8 fifths and negative, and negative 2 fifths. This is just a rough approximation to help us draw the graph. So I'll draw on those x-intercepts. And since my coefficient of x squared is positive, my parabola is going to be opening upwards. So something kind of like this. Notice that the x coordinate of my vertex is going to be exactly halfway in between my two x intercepts by the symmetry of the graph. Well, the number halfway in between negative 1 plus square root of 10 over 5 and negative 1 minus square root of 10 over 5 is just going to be exactly negative 1. So the x-coordinate of my vertex is going to be negative 1. And I can find the y-coordinate of my vertex by plugging in that x-coordinate of negative 1 into my original equation for my function. Just like I would find any y-value on my function by plugging in an x-value. So the y-coordinate of my vertex is going to be 5 times negative 1 squared plus 10 times negative 1 plus 3, which simplifies to negative 2. The reasoning we used to find the vertex in this quadratic function can be generalized to find a vertex formula 
for any quadratic function. For any quadratic function, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we know we can find the x-intercepts by setting y equal to 0 and using the quadratic formula. Since the x-coordinate of the vertex is halfway in between these two x-intercepts, it has to be exactly negative b over 2a. And once we find the x-coordinate of the vertex, we can easily find the y-coordinate by plugging in x-coordinate into the original function. This gives us the super useful vertex formula that the x-coordinate is just negative b over 2a, and then the y-coordinate is just that number, whatever it is, plugged into our function. To summarize, the graph of a quadratic function has the shape of a parabola. It opens up if a is greater than 0 and down if a is less than 0. To find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And to find the vertex, we take the x-coordinate as negative b over 2a and we plug in to find the y-coordinate. To find additional points on the graph, we can plug in x values and get y values as needed. So for example, to quickly graph f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 2, we can find the vertex, negative b over 2a is negative negative 4 over 2 times 3, which is 4 sixths or 2 thirds. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. The y-coordinate is going to be f of 2 thirds which is 3 times 2 thirds squared minus 4 times 2 thirds plus 2, which is 2 thirds also. The graph is opening upwards since the leading coefficient 3 is positive, and the x-intercepts can be found by setting y equal to 0 and solving for x. In fact, in this situation, we won't have any x-intercepts because we have to take the square root of a negative number in order to solve for x. So there are no solutions here, or no x-intercepts. I'll finish this problem by drawing a quick sketch using the vertex and the fact that the graph is opening upwards. To draw a more careful sketch, I should plug in some additional values of x. Early in this video, we talked about standard form and vertex form. To convert from vertex form to standard form, we can simply distribute out. Converting from standard form to vertex form is a little trickier, but with the help of the vertex formula, we can do it. First of all, we know the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative b over 2a, so that's negative 8 over 2 times 2, or negative 2 in this situation. The y-coordinate of the vertex can be found by plugging in the x-coordinate into our function. So that's 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 5, which works out to negative 3. Now we know that when we're in vertex form, a times x minus h squared plus k, our vertex is at h k. Therefore, since our vertex is now at negative 2, negative 3, we can just plug in negative 2 for h, that's minus negative 2, that means x plus 2, and negative 3 for k. Finally, we just need to figure out what a is, but it's always the same as our leading coefficient. So a is 2. And now we've converted to vertex form. In this video, we found ways of finding the vertex using the formula negative b over 2a. We practiced graphing, finding x-intercepts, and we practiced converting between standard and vertex form.